well, fabulous to, to meet you, I guess, is about as meet as we get. Yeah, for now. Mm. Your English sounds superb. What were you worried about? Well, Dutch people, they always have like this Dutch accent. Okay, well, I've been looking at your um, plans and uh, very interesting. Oh, what name are we going to use for you on this? For my for my name on this screen or what you want? Yeah, on this uh, on this podcast, if you call if you want to call it that. Uh, you can call me Gach, R A G. R G. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, R G is good. Nice, and, nice, and, nice and anonymous. We like it that way. Yeah, you need to be sometimes. Huh? Yeah. You grow your tomatoes good and stuff, you know. I've I, been a web radio host now for about seven years and involved in all sorts of sort of political activism and sort of mental health rights and uh, uh, drug prohibition. Uh, yeah, just sort of exposing some of the, the nonsense that comes out through drug bloody prohibition in this country and others. Yeah, and the UK is really bad. Yeah, yeah. Like even worse than here in the Netherlands. Mm, yeah, you tell Especially me about with, it. Especially uh, with like the weed-related issues there, it's like really problematic. Uh, right, okay, so onto the, onto the subject of driver. Well, not even, it's not really drivers, is it? We're, we're really sort of discussing uh, the choice of materials and components for a complete build here, really. I mean, I know that you've already decided on what cobs you plan on using and your approximate layout on what sort of frame you yeah. plan on building this around, which is admirable. And really, it's only the driver selection that we really sort of got together for this call for. But I think it might be an interesting sort of topic just to explore some of your uh, rationale behind some of your uh, choices. I'd uh, really especially like to touch on why you thought that series was preferable to parallel for wiring of the of the cobs. So okay. maybe if we just start there, what was your thinking behind there? Was it just primarily having followed the sort of green jeans and the grow mouses? Big up both of you, by the way. Yeah. It's, of this yeah, world it's... using the big mean well drivers, which only output in sort of high voltages. Yeah, it was just like uh, when you first start out, you just like try to like copy the successful recipes. You see like everybody's wiring in series. So you just like figure out this should be the best way. But uh, now, after a while of more researching, I find it not particularly the best way. It's just sometimes the best way. And it just depends on your case what is the best way to wire them. They do contain more risks, though. I, uh, that's also why I wanted to wire series. Uh, there's no thermal runaway and stuff. Okay, well, let's just cover that issue um, first of all. I think that the reason why the mean well drivers are pegged at the sort of voltages that they are is because they were initially designed, uh, intended for use with long strings of individual LEDs. Yes. And so uh, the series voltages would very soon build up from quite a short string. And then each of these... Um, uh, high voltage strings would then be paralleled in order to make the, the desired wattages. With cobs, we have a slightly different situation because we're not just talking about a bare mounted LED on a, on a backing um, substrate. We're actually talking about something that is an entirely new technology effectively to the LED market. And that's um, an array of uh, parallel and series configuration. I think my Vero is it's 12 and 12. So you've got 12 uh, series, um, uh, 12 LEDs in a series and then 12 of those series in parallel. Yeah, like on the cob itself. Yeah, on the, yeah built into the surface of the cob. And then in, in addition to that, we have um, tiny miniaturized protection circuits built in between each of those arrays to ensure a correct um, balancing of the voltages internally to the device and that this also protect, provides a quite a high degree of protection from uh, the external uh, basically the driver output and certainly in our experience if you have a well matched set of LEDs being driven in parallel from a single driver at their rated voltage, 
that if you disconnect one LED from that array, you will simply drop that amount of wattage off of the overall power output from the driver and the LEDs will not get any bright. The other, the remaining LEDs won't get any brighter. Okay. Now I'm not going to uh, swear on that absolutely because it's not something that I've intentionally done and intentionally checked, but certainly from sort of casual experience, I haven't noticed a sudden brightening of the other LEDs in a bank if one goes out on a on a well balanced parallel array. Okay, nice. Do you does that sort of adequately explain why I prefer parallel to series, especially considering that in series, if one LED does give out, of course you lose the entire string. Yes, so then it will be just shut down, of course, the whole circuit will shut down. I thought this was more of like a safety feature built in, so then when anything is wrong, just everything shuts down and, well, they need to come and check in, like, how's the light? But, yeah, but you know, you're quite right, of course, it, it would do that, but of course also in a, in a growing environment, having a full blackout because of a single bulb failure isn't necessarily something that you would be looking to design in. No, that's true, that's true. This is only like the first small one I'm doing, so I'm, I'm still figuring it out. So I, I, I tend to think like parallel is better, but maybe I need to like build in some uh, safety features so that thermal runaway cannot happen. Or well, something. I mean, there are certain other reasons uh, for opting for series. Uh, one reason in particular would be if you had to have a long cable run, if you wanted your driver to be wall mounted, and especially if you wanted it to be wall mounted outside of the the, um, the growing environment, which a lot of the the lads are doing that are doing the larger grows because they've got banks of these things which will be outputting quite a significant amount of heat of themselves. Then the higher voltages require much thinner wire between the driver and the uh, the LED. Uh, in my opinion, that's a moderate um, gain over the disadvantage of having high voltage DC indoors, especially if this is in a domestic environment. There's a reason why when we went to over 110 volts, uh, the domestic supply all went over to AC is because anything over 110 volts DC is frankly dangerous. Yeah, that's true. So how higher it gets, in, especially in series, if you wire it, it's like one on, on one cable, all the current, all the voltage is there. So you should be really careful. This is also one of the risks I was like uh, thinking of because it's like when you get like a short circuit or something through you, when you get like 320 volts with a couple of amps, it's not going to be beautiful. I mean, one thing to bear in mind is that with all of these um, uh, PWM type drivers, uh, the, the sort of waterproof Meanwell and the, the type that you've been contacting Brightstar about, uh, they will pretty much across the market come with built-in uh, thermal protection if, for if they overheat and also for short and open circuit protection. Nice, thanks, thanks. But, um... Yeah, and the other thing that you were um, uh, wanting to discuss, really, I suppose, was this um, the matter of uh, whether or not to overdrive. Yeah, and certainly in my in all of my calculations, uh, the initial the initial expense is one of the largest factors that everybody seems to be um, concerned about, and obviously, if you can. Uh, if you can effectively overdrive your uh, your investment in cobs without risking damaging them through over voltage, over current, or over temperature, then it's more bang for your buck. Because generally speaking, the cost of the drivers, so increasing the size of the power source for the LEDs, is uh, uh, a moderate additional expense and of course with the LEDs you're just using exactly the same cob so there's no additional expense so the overall sort of doubling of power that is possible through effective overdriving if you really want to go to extremes um, personally I would stay around 150% drive current on cobs that are rated at uh, being capable of 200% just to give yourself a bit of uh, lifespan sort of uh, headroom 
so you don't wear out the cobs through uh, driving them too hard. Um, and yeah, effectively, as long as you can maintain temperatures below the, uh, the, the, the maximum junction temperature, which on most cobs is around 85C, uh, I recommend keeping a, a, um, a heat sink temperature somewhere around 30 degrees below that. So anywhere around 50 to 55C on the actual heat sink. Um, is a, a reasonable margin to allow for the, all the various thermal permissivities of your um, cob material, the thermal paste that you put in between the cob and the heat sink and uh, the actual thermal capability of the heat sink itself. And then all these things uh, come together. I think this is really the most difficult part of, of like any bill. Like which heat sinks should I use and how does this work together? Because it's like very confusing. A lot of people using the active heat sinks and they state like a uh, wattage on there like and then people like blindly copy this to like the heat dissipation of the light. But this is never like fully compatible. Because it's not in the same unit, not in the same explanation. Uh, you're absolutely right on that point. And in fact, I've spent quite a lot of my time today uh, desperately trying to inform a couple of the lads over on Roll It Up. Yeah, it's hard. Um, it's hard. That they shouldn't be relying on computer CPU rated wattage handling in any way to assess the capability um of the the heatsink to handle their desired wattage of led because the thermal characteristics of the two are entirely different and the uh, total consumption wattage of your cpu and your led are going to have very different thermal outputs exactly that's what i'm saying yeah, absolutely i was concurring with you sir nice nice yeah, like uh, for the overdriving, also wanted to say something like um, when I like buy like uh, four cups and I uh, just give them like a limited amount of amp, I would like maybe get uh, one third of the amount of light I get when I overdrive them. So it's like uh, you get a very large amount of light for the cost. Like uh, for from this for uh, CLU 48 uh, 1212s, I can like almost get 40,000 lumens out of the four of them, which is like pretty pretty intense mm. well uh, to be quite honest the 40,000 lumens I think would just be at rated drive current wouldn't it be for those I think they're and they um, would be only just over drive current I seem to remember seeing that they're about 8,000 lumens each 8, 9,000 lumens each yeah something like this and then uh, yeah when driving them at like 1900 uh, milliamps you get them to 11,000 yeah, which is pretty much your uh, your starting lumens for uh, the Vero twenty nines, which are a, an eighty watt rated cob. Yeah, exactly. And so you get like a lot of power out of this uh, very tiny cob. So it's uh, like a way to go if you want to do it real cheap and want to get a lot of light. Eff efficiency will drop, of course. But it will still probably be higher than an HP. If you actually look at the efficiency curves you'll notice that there's about a 20% efficiency uh, drop between 20C and 100C. And so if you manage to maintain my recommended sort of 55C at the uh, thermal material itself of the heatsink, then you don't actually suffer that, that uh, cost burden. Yeah, yeah, this was also what I was aiming for, 50 degrees Celsius on my uh, heat sink. I certainly think, I, I certainly think that's uh, there or thereabouts for the longevity of the cobs. We certainly haven't seen any uh, deterioration in any of ours running at those sort of temperatures as yet. This, that should be just perfectly fine. Everybody's running them at these degrees and uh, that's turning out good. But I just need a bigger heat sink than the other guys would use because they only using like half the amperage I want to use. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the, uh, if you're in the position of being able to try a couple of different heat sinks before opting for your final choice, that would be my choice of paths for this, simply because I've found that with these thermal calculations, especially as you so rightly point out, that all of the numbers that you're going to see in your CPU cooler spec sheet 
are going to be entirely inapplicable or are going to be very difficult indeed to directly convert into your CWAP figures from your uh, LEDs basically leaves us with experiment being the only real genuine measure of this thing and then simply having taken your appropriate measurement you can then interpret the numbers that you see in the spec sheet so if something uh, declares itself as having a higher thermal permissivity than the one that you've just used and the one that you've just used wasn't getting cool enough then you know that the one with the higher permissivity is at least going to do hopefully in theory a better job than the one that you just used and then this is like how the way to go huh? and uh, like on a, it's a smaller heat sink is never going to be like wasted because there's like a lot of cups out there and a lot of small ones everybody want to add red leds blue leds and there's like a whole world of leds and heat sinks you can always use them yes yeah certainly yeah for, for augmentation and stuff yeah so if you go out and buy something that's too small there will be some even you know what i mean for us um if we buy a heat sink that proves itself to be too small for a flowering environment it's often absolutely perfect for a veg environment where you're running at a lower wattage exactly you will always find use for this stuff but yeah just uh try new st- try new heat sinks try new stuff and share it with the people online so that everybody uh gets forward more quickly it's certainly um uh, i mean one of the 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 driving forces uh for me behind this is uh sort of anywhere really below London in Europe suffers from fairly high air temperatures and the the difference in the uh, environmental capabilities of a unit like this will almost pay for itself if you ever suffer from uh, a sort of crop cap- catastrophe because you've sort of topped out 30 degrees during your, your flower cycle or whatever. Yeah, I've seen it a lot this summer. It was a very hot summer. And I just think it's entirely inappropriate just to constantly be throwing more air conditioning and more uh, energy demand. I mean, I mean this, is, uh, this is something that I really feel that I should probably touch on here is just simply uh, to point out that with the, uh, the sort of uh, global energy situation that, that it is to be throwing as many watts as the uh, HPS and the metal halide boys are throwing at a canopy and then the additional watts of the uh, you know i mean the tons of air conditioning that they have to put on the back end of those in some of the warmer places and this isn't for a food crop guys nobody's eating this this is only because of the situation because if the situation wasn't like this and well and they would treat this like a normal plant and then people wouldn't uh, be able to produce this with this expensive uh, inefficient lamps because it wouldn't just not be worth the price on the market it's just now nowadays it's this but hps will probably be replaced uh, when there's like a full legalization i'm not so sure that's necessarily going to be true in in sort of northern europe where we are just simply because of the issues with the flowering cycle and the the number of harvests that you could possibly fit into a year even if it was uh, able to be grown outdoors easily well, that's just my feeling on the subject. Okay, well, um, do you feel like there's anything that you uh, particularly need to touch on here? Because uh, a short podcast is always a punchy one and is less likely to lose people towards the end. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, not really too much. I just have a couple of questions, but I think I will just write them on Skype to you. And then... Okay, well, I mean, just, just one last um, little subject is... Um, yeah. The frame, little frame design that you uh, sent me the Skype link to, I realised that that was just a sort of scribbled sketch just for yeah, a general... Yeah, it was yeah. Just really good yeah. sketch. I yeah. absolutely appreciate that. Um, but one thing that I would caution you on there is you have no triangulation in that frame. And so it will have a nasty habit of wanting to sort of trapezium and fold itself into a flat shape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, I will put some uh, some uh, crossbars in there to to make it rigid. I mean, for me, I actually use exactly that same design, but just simply with the addition of two more bars, uh, slightly lower down, and at the at the far ends, and this effectively without 
actually using any triangles makes a triangulated structure which is rigid in in all three major dimensions oh yeah yeah of course man i will make a very nice and sturdy frame i was just uh making this sketch to show that i'm not um putting cops in the middle because i think all the lights will overlap in the middle and if i put one there it well, there, just well i mean there, much there is something that we could just touch on here is your um you were concerned about hot spotting yeah. which yeah. i entirely understand um but the one thing that i would suggest is that from our experience a cob spacing of uh, 250 millimeters for 40 watts and of uh, 400 millimeters for 80 watts appears to be about the best um, uh, light distribution that you can get with multiple cob arrays so okay you're only using the four so it's not really quite so crucial but should you be building an 8 or a 12 or a 16 cob array then they're quite good numbers uh, for ensuring that you don't have... Essentially, your issue being is that you want to avoid having more than two or three overlapping cobs on a single patch because then you'll get a build-up of light and, like you say, a hot spot there. But uh, certainly our, our light meter, um, sort of real-world measurements at approximately a meter from the, uh, from the unit with like i say 40 watt with 250 mil spacings 25 centimeters about a foot um and with uh 80 watt then more like 400 mil which is uh what's that that's about uh one and a half one and three quarter foot and at one uh foot and ten inches or something that, that's helpful man i i wrote it down I mean, with with your setup there, you probably could go for quite wide, quite a lot wider spacings, um, simply because anything anything over uh, anything over four hundred, you're not going to get any hot spots. Yeah, of course, but this um, first one is a bit limited with size. I want to squeeze the most light in there as I can. So but this is. Yeah, I mean, it's also worth it's yeah. also worth bearing in mind as well that the the cone of light. Um, is generally speaking around 115 degrees. So if you can imagine an ice cream cone with a 150 degree, uh, degree uh, angle coming from the center of your LED. Yeah, I already uh, like hang some strings down the ceiling from my uh, little place and then uh, made them like a 120 degrees uh, circle from them to see where the light would go. And that's why I came up with this design. I like your style. A true experimentalist. Yeah, this is before I found a lot of information about this, so I couldn't. Just, <laughs> it was, but it was fun. I, I ex well, I was this. Was, I was actually going to put a post and roll it up today um, about treasure your fuck ups. Yeah, I think we all need to make mistakes, make them often, and make them hard, and pay the bloody price because you learn so much more from them. True, true. Yeah, and you will never forget it. Oh, no, I now I have it like very visual, you know, when I talk about uh, the distribution of the light of a cup. It's very visual for me because I've done this experiment. Yeah, well, for me, I had to draw it all out hard on paper, which took me absolutely hours, <laughs> but was quite satisfying. And then the uh, the experimental results um, supported the the uh, drawn mapping. So right. a bit of trigonometry never goes amiss. Trigonometry and uh, draftsmanship. Well... I'm not that good of a draftsman, but I like it when people can. Okay, well, look, it's it's rewarding that you're not um, uh, finding any of this particularly threatening, which to me tells me that you've done your research, that you're probably quite um, uh, capable to start with, and this really should just be a, a matter of applying um, whatever you decide because this is the important thing as well, is especially being as, as sort of uh, happy to experiment as you are, that it's important to make a decision, to know why you made that decision, and then to stick by that decision and find out what happens. Well, yeah, this is like uh, a lot of people warned me against to like drive the like, current high, you know. Some people like advise me for it, like you. So I just made my decision. I done my research, you know. This is what I think I want to try and experiment with, so... I'm going to try to build some small rigs with a lot of power, you know, for for their size and for what they can cost. 
Uh, yeah, that that sounds absolutely uh, just the the perfect approach to take, and and I can't see you doing anything other than succeeding in in the approach that you are taking. It sounds like you've really got this nailed down. Well, thank you so much. Uh, man. You had I hear you had a good experience with Glenn as well, my little Glenn Wong. Oh yeah, he's so nice. Of oh, bright yeah. star He LEDs. wants to help out so much, all the time, every time. But uh, yeah, he, I ordered some drivers from him, so. Just made the payment, so we will see. Hope they ship out quick. Excellent. Well, like I say, if they're if they're uh, anything beyond their standard 250 watt drivers, they will be customizing those units specially for your to your requirement. So uh, you can expect maybe three weeks. Yeah. So it's no rush because uh, I've ordered some other drivers for the meantime. But I I'm just planning on building a lot of these. So uh, yeah, order in advance. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, okay. Well, that's. Uh, I think we've covered all the bases there. It'd be really good to uh, have maybe a couple of follow-up calls on this one as we uh, assemble the parts and. Yeah, of course. And I will make some pictures, and then uh, we can like uh, put them also there to the to wherever you're putting this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this will primarily be going up on YouTube and obviously um, shared on the forums. Um, the the. Um, uh, the one thing that I probably should put my hand on heart here is that I uh, I have said that I'm going to make a video about this uh, thermistor dimming, this thermal protection thermistor dimming, yeah. and uh, that's one of the reasons why I was going to post in the forum about fucking up and fucking up hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm now on my third third batch of thermistors, um, each of which was successively initially believed to be the right thermistor. And I still haven't quite got to the, the thermal management that I was looking for. They're working. Uh, certainly in the theory is playing out, but the practice of actually trying to select precisely the right uh, value thermistor for this application is proving to be slightly uh, more uh, problematic. It can be challenging. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I had a, I had a, um, uh, a quite nice... Uh, admittedly higher than I'd um, than I'd calculated for. I had a, a sort of a probably 65, 70 degree um, uh, heatsink temperatures with all of the fans cut and just left to heat up. And so essentially, as the as the heatsink heats up, the thermistor lowers its resistance value, which on the dimming circuit dims the lights, and eventually the two reach an equilibrium point. Yeah, it should be work very nice in theory, but to to let this play out all the time with the different thermistors all the time, this is going to take a long time. Yeah, I would hope to be able to establish a few kind of um, basic rules here. I mean, one of the the primary issues is I don't really understand um, the need for the differing resistance values on the dimming circuits yet. I understand how to deploy them, but I don't understand the theory behind what I'm doing uh, so I'm a bit sort of fumbling around in the dark there and these are very much sort of part of that whole sort of stumbling around in the dark and finding out by primarily by experiment ah, but this is the the greatest learning you just told me absolutely absolutely and and as you can hear I'm learning along with you this isn't I'm no expert in this I've I've spent the last uh, must be actually nearly a year I suppose, dedicated to this subject. Uh, we got given that um, spider cob with a horrible monochrome red and blue, which just worked appallingly. Um, seemed to be an awful lot of hardware just to throw in the bin, so we decided to convert that to white. And then having done so and had remarkable results from it, we were then convinced to convert our HPS um, side over to LED. Uh, we did that. Uh, as a side-by-side -side experiment initially so we put in a small LED rig next to the HPS and literally grew uh, two plants in the same cupboard under uh, entirely differing light systems and absolutely established the advantage of much lower wattages of LED over the uh, equivalent HPS we ran that I think we ran about 160 watts against 600 watts of HPS yeah. And everybody wanted the side that had been under the LED. It was bigger, yeah, we crazy. got more crop, and the quality was in incredibly, noticeably different. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. For this um, this uh, first light, I'm gonna be building. Um, the second one after this one, I'm gonna make uh, one. This is like 600 watts dissipation at the wall, and it's gonna compete also against the HPS. So I think I can also like surprise some faces with that. Okay. Well, I mean, our, our kind of um, tentative uh, our tentative calculation that we're running on at the moment, I would suggest, is actually possibly um, quite a cautious estimate would be about three times the uh, watt light power so if you're running 600 watts of leds you're effectively 1800 watts of hps or mh equivalent you see what i mean so it's probably gonna you know some phases gonna be like surprised when they see this harvest get your sunglasses <laughs> i hope so get your sunglasses ready i've burnt my eyes with these bastards oh, so yeah. many times now it's really not funny i actually feel like my eyes are going a bit bad because of it so yeah i had this experience already this is what started it out for me really because i uh i bought like a fluent bioengineering you know this is like one of this uh like already um done led lights is also in the wide spectrum and it's pretty awesome it's the follow-up on the spider from bml and uh well it's just a stock light and it was white lead and this got me interested in and i saw the simplicity of the device so i just thought hey man i can do this this is not difficult yeah well that was pretty much our experience i i, I had assumed that it would be a much greater complexity than it was and yes. on converting the the spider over to the the monochrome spider over to a uh, full spectrum i found that it was no more difficult than a than a a, a flashlight with two double a cells and a, and a bulb and a switch it's really one of the simplest devices. It's just a light, but just like a super sized one. Yeah, it's just a DC light bulb. Yep. I think that's a good part, place to finish. I think also. You've been an absolute fabulous uh, guest. Thank you so much, RG. Thank you very much, Jack. And, yeah, well, you're uh, yeah. very welcome. Um, we should hopefully have a decent recording of this. So if that is the case, I'll have that edited down in no time at all. And. Uh, throw you a copy for your approval well i look forward to that and uh yeah i will write you some additional questions i think about my setup but i will uh let you be for the evening today i'm sure that there'll be plenty of uh toing and throwing over skype cool 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 thank you very much man you're very welcome mate you're very okay. welcome thank you for allowing me to record it no problem and, Bye -bye. Your, Engli and your english is superb thank you very much you're very welcome Speak Hi, soon, sir.